Happy 2025 everyone. I hope it's going to be a great year and that we're all going to find awesome fossils. I've been 3D printing as you can see over here. There's my Velociraptor skeleton and my little bush mower over there. And I've put together some clips from 2024, some highlights. I hope you enjoy it. I came across this concretion a few years ago. Um, it had fallen out of the cliff after a big flood we had and there were really, really nice bones going through the middle of it. It's Cretaceous, so it's probably some kind of marine reptile, a plesiosaur or a mosasaur. There's the sign for it, plesiosaur or mosasaur, and since I found it I've spent a lot of time looking at it, and I remember when I saw it the first time there was a paddle bone, so one of the flipper bones right at the end there, and I thought maybe these could have been ribs sticking out, but looking at it now I think we're looking at one paddle, so one of the, the fins of a plesiosaur, would have been a really big fin this is about one meter so three feet wide just over there but yeah I think that's a probably a paddle from a plesiosaur in here I need to remove all this rock and then prep down over here so we can see what's going on there you can see there's about a foot of rock that I have to remove over here so it's gonna be a rather big prep job and it's quite soft on the outside, but that's only for a few centimeters, and then it's literally rock hard. But I think the bone's only in this layer, so we might be able to remove quite a bit of that with a saw, I'm hoping. And if you do want to come check it out, it's right here outside my workshop. As part of my geology course we do these field trips and for second year we go to Glens of Tokoa which is about an hour and a half north of Christchurch. Here's the Google Earth view. The area is beautiful and very hilly so we did a fair amount of hill climbing in our time there. This is us on one of the other hills on the far side of the syncline. That's the syncline we're looking at uh, one of the sides. And we're actually sitting on a volcano on this side. So between us, where we're sitting now, and that other sink line, there's actually a fault line going through which we had to map. And here you can see some comments on my first go. Some beautiful, beautiful cross beds here. And of course I had to go look for a shark tooth and did find one actually. The landowner had found these mower bones while he was digging a dam on his farm and he got in touch with the university and Paul Schofield decided to use it as, a, as an opportunity to teach us how to jacket bones. Uh, these were really fragile bones so they had to be jacketed in plaster before we could move them. And here are all the bones ready for removal. This is one of two mower that was found in this, this hole that he dug. They had to be jacketed and removed before the rain came and there was going to be a big downpour the next day.
Ja, jetzt kommt ein Glas. Okay. <lacht> oh. That's looking real good. <lacht> okay, that's gone really well. Well, that went really, really well. <lacht> Look at it. It's got the other side of the, the jaw over there. Online, his username is Mamlambo, a mythical creature from his South African homeland, which he and his friends used to hunt as youngsters. Now living in New Zealand, Mornay Mamlambo is searching for fossils, and videos of his finds attract millions of views worldwide. Jindy Harper joined him on what turned out to be a successful fossic for fossils. Yeah, and when I started Googling it, it turns out like North Canterbury is known for like the best crab fossils giant penguins, mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, all sorts of things, so I was hooked. That first find now has company. This is the bottom jaw of a whale. Oh, I'll show you this one. And this is another whale vertebrae. This is a whale ear bone. This is what they look like outside of the rock. This one's quite special. These are actually sperm whale teeth. Then there's the 70 million year old juvenile plesiosaur, the remarkable bony tooth bird. That's the biggest flying bird that ever lived. The fossils are maybe from Miocene. Uh, there's some younger ones, Holocene ones, so from 100,000 years to about 12 million years. Most of the fossils on this table is where I found them. Uh, I'm going to show you one now from the Cretaceous, which is over there. So about 75, 80 million years old. You can tell me what that is sticking out there. So I'll show you what I saw when I found it on the, in the river. So it was in the river after a flood. And you can see there's a little bit of bone sticking out there. And there was a tiny bit of bone sticking out there. Yes. Plesiosaur. Yeah, yeah, you've got it right there. So this is a plesiosaur vertebra that I found. And I could tell, you can kind of see the round angle over there. And I could tell from that it was probably a vertebra. So there I am helpfully pointing it out. <laughs> uh, if you miss anything in these videos, they are on my YouTube channel, so you can have a look at them. Uh, you can see me, I put a pool noodle over that one air scribe because it was shaking a bit too much. And pool noodles are used for anything. <laughs> there it is in the vinegar. And for some reason, this concretion over here reacted very well with the vinegar. Some are slow, some are fast. This was a much faster one. So it's really, you can see all the bubbles appearing there. Nice and fizzy. You want it to be fizzy because then it's taking a lot more rock away from that. You know, I'm coming in with the air scrub. So what I do with the air scrub, I remove the rock until there's only about a millimeter of rock on top of the bone. Um, and then when I've got that millimeter of rock, I put it in the vinegar and it takes it away and you get a really nice bone surface. So This gives you an idea of what we're looking for. You can see the sand layer, and there's a bone in there. And right above the, the sand layer is a blue clay layer. And you don't want to dig into the blue clay layer. You want to dig into the sandy layer. That's where the bone is. And we put it into those sieves, and that will break down when we put it in the river. Here's a really nice, I think it was a duck femur that we found. Athena and I found and you can see that's actually in the blue clay layer so not the layer we were looking for we've got both parts of it over there there it is just sticking out of that blue clay uh, we extracted it and that will be in the pile of fossils to be prepped you can see how muddy it was it was raining the entire day so everything got muddy and soaked there's Athena uh, digging in there you see all those little black pieces those are little bits of bone this bone layer is so rich there's literally thousands of bones in this bone layer which is probably from some flood event that's why it's so sandy here's a really nice partial fish skull we found or part of a fish skull at least 
You can see in how good condition the bone is. It's beautiful. And definitely one of the highlights for me is this amazing space I've got now to display my fossils and for people to come and touch them. As you can see, I had to put a sign up here, please touch, because parents were telling their kids not to touch the fossils. And that's a great way to learn is to just touch the fossils and feel them, uh, feel what a fossil crab would feel like over there. And you can touch some actual plesiosaur bones. If you're in the Christchurch, North Canterbury area, come along on Sundays from 10 to 2. I'll be opening up this space every Sunday. And in school holidays, I'll also have it open for, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I might have to work some days, so someone else will be here. But it'll be open on Tuesday, Thursdays in the school holidays.